something. up YouTube we are back at it yet again we're here it's Wednesday it's a tutorial today on DaVinci Resolve and I'm super pumped to bring you guys this tutorial we're going over how to track objects to things or just track things in general within DaVinci which means we're getting into fusion and we are going to be using the free version of DaVinci so we don't have the camera tracker what we're going to be using is the planar tracker and Step number one, if you have the ability to not, you don't always have this opportunity, but on my left hand, which we track the logo to, I created a tracking marker, this black X. Tracking markers make tracking so much easier and it makes you, it's almost like a sure way of knowing you're gonna get a good track. If you have the ability to use a tracking marker, which can be actual marker like me, it could be tape, it could be a sticker, Anything that's going to cause a high amount of contrast, it allows the planar tracker to uh, read that much easier. So for me, I had a black marker laying on my desk, so I just scribbled on my hand a little X. Made it much easier to track and get that data, but in the event that you can't do so, uh, you just try to find something high in contrast within your frame and, and you can track that. But we'll get it all into that once we get into DaVinci. First thing is I want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing and following along and commenting and liking all my videos and uh, giving me feedback. I appreciate you all. And uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys are subscribing because we're dropping three videos a week. Fridays going to be Photoshop Fridays. Wednesdays are tutorials in DaVinci. And Mondays are going to be, I know my previous video said like creative videos, but they're literally going to be anything. That could be a tech review. It could be... Uh, a creative vlog. I'm going on a cruise on Saturday, so I'm going to vlog all of that. So you guys will be getting a vlog on a Monday coming up sometime soon. Um, it could be anything. Anything you guys want, put it in the description or put it in the comments, not the description. That's my job. Put it in the comments below and I will make sure I make things that you guys want on uh, Mondays as well. So without delaying this anymore, let's just get into DaVinci. Let's get into Fusion and let's start tracking things. All right, guys, now that we are back here in DaVinci, as you guys can see in my timeline down here, I have the DaVinci Resolve logo already inputted into the timeline, along with a little part of the clip where my hand has the, the black X on there for my tracking marker. So the first thing you wanna do before going into Fusion is you're gonna to wanna to color grade your clip and get it to the look that you want it to look like right away. Because when you go into Fusion and combine these two clips, then when you apply a color grade, it will then apply that set, that color grade to the DaVinci Resolve logo as well. So in order to not color grade the DaVinci Resolve logo and only color grade the background clip or the original clip, you wanna do that before we go into Fusion. So what we wanna do is highlight both of these clips and you're gonna right click on them and you do new fusion clip. And when you have that done, as you can see that the logo goes away and everything like that, and it combines down into one clip, make sure that your uh, playhead is over the fusion clip and you can come right down here and we're going to go into fusion. Now, when we are in fusion, we have your media one, your media two, your merge node and your media out. Media out, I'm gonna, if, if you push the number two, we'll bring it up into this viewer and I'm gonna just see what media one is. That's gonna be my background layer is gonna be me, and then my foreground layer will be the DaVinci Resolve logo, which I, is now the second viewer. So we're gonna put media out, which is our final product, back in the final viewer right here. And we wanna make sure that we have our two clips laid out properly. I'm gonna rename these. I'm gonna rename this to Sam Clip. And I'll rename this one to logo, just so we can stay organized. All right, so what we wanna do is we want to track this X on the background clip. We wanna track that and, and get the data of how that moves on the screen. So what we wanna do is you're gonna click on your back, or the SAM clip, you're gonna push Shift, Spacebar. And that's gonna bring up your select tools. You just wanna type in planar tracker just like that click it and add and it instantly adds it in to um, your the line of the nodes here so if it's not in there and it's 
like this. All you have to do is select your planar tracker node, hit shift, and get it so that those lines light up and let go, and it'll come right in there. All right, once you've got the planar tracker node in line with the SAM clip and connected to the merge node, what you wanna do is you're gonna make sure your planar tracker node is selected, come over to the tracker data here, and we wanna push hybrid point slash area. And then for motion type, this all is gonna depend on what you are doing within your, your clip, what you all want tracked. So there's perspective, there's translation, translation rotation, translation rotation scale, and then there is a fine, so which is TRS and shear. For this, all we need is translation. All that's going to do is track the motion of my hand, and they like whether it goes up, down, left, or right. If I was going forward or I was going backward, and I wanted that image to scale backwards and forwards with everything. I would have to select translation, rotation, and scale. Or if I was rotating at any kind of point, you would want translation and rotation. But for me right now, translation is good enough. Now, the output, we could have all these different, you could have a mask, mask over background. But for us right now, we just want background. And which channel you wanna track? I'm gonna do Luma right now, but sometimes it is more effective to use the blue, green, or red, depending on the color grade and depending on um, what uh, in your image there's more of. So sometimes if there's like a lot of like blues in my image, I might select the blue channel because you just get a better track that way. But for right now, because it's a high contrasted uh, area with the black X in my hand, I'm gonna do Luma. Mm -hmm. So once we have our settings all set, we're gonna come back to the very first frame or whichever frame you wanna start tracking by. I'm going to hold control or command on Mac. I'm going to zoom in and with the planar tracker selected, I'm just going to create a little circle around the area that I want to track. I'm going to come up here. You're going to set your reference time. And now you have all of these options right here. So if you select this one, that's going to track one frame forward and only one frame. And as you can see right here, all these little green dots, that's telling you that's what is being tracked. But we don't want to just do one track or one frame at a time. What we're going to do, if you hit this one, this is going to track to end. So it's going to track this whole entire clip. So you just want to come here, select it, and it's going to move forward, and this is tracking that clip. So now you guys can see the importance of having the X or any kind of tracking marker. Without that tracking marker there, I would have never got as good of a track or maybe even a track at all from my hand. I might have had a track like my bracelets or my wedding ring or something like that. So anytime there's like a high contrasted area, it's going to track really, really nicely. If it's not and it was just my hand, um, it would definitely be a struggle because the planar tracker works best with high contrasted areas. But anyways, now that we got the track, what we want to do is come down here, which is create planar transform. And once you click that, you'll notice here down over in the node graph is this planar transform node is created. What we want to do, this is all the data. This is like the tracking data from my hand. You want to hold shift when you have that selected and put it under the logo right there. And as you can see, it's already moved a little bit on our final output. And if we play it back, it'll follow my hand like so but that's not exactly where we want it we want it right over my hand we maybe want to blend it a little better or however you know we want to move it so in order to get that to be moved directly over my hand the size we want it let's create a transform node so we're gonna hit shift spacebar type in transform hit add all right so once you have the transform node added in here to your node graph what you want to do Let's come over to the, here to the right once you have the transform node selected. And you'll notice you can control your center, your pivot, your size, your aspect, your angle. You can flip it up, down, left, right. You can do a bunch of different things within this transform node. But all we want to do right now is get it over my hand and maybe make it a little bit smaller. So you want to come over here. You can select these little arrows and you want to just drag them right on over your hand, my hand and bring down the size maybe just a little bit and that kind of moved it on us so we just 
move it right on back. All right, so once you have the item that you're trying to track resized and positioned perfectly, however you want it positioned, we'll come back to the edit page and we will see how this plays through. All right, so now that it's all rendered, this is what the end product will look like. All right guys, so that is how you track things within DaVinci Resolve using the planar tracker. And uh, this can work for so many different things, whether it's tracking an object to a wall, tracking an object to your hand like me, um, tracking, you know, skies to your background or like, you know, getting them to the background to the foreground. So they move the same way. And I'll actually link up here a video for that on my, on my sky replacement, showing you guys how to use the tracker for that. Thank you guys again though for uh, always showing love and subscribing and following along. I love putting out these YouTube videos, like literally some of the most fun I've ever had doing videos is making these YouTube tutorials for you guys. So I'm super pumped to be bringing you guys more. If you want to see anything in particular, put, the, put it in the comments below. I have a gimbal tutorial coming out yet. I got to go home because I have some friends that are going to help me uh, film that and then I got some other tutorials on glitch transitions that I'm trying to perfect for you guys. That's all coming yet. And uh, presets will be coming with those glitch transitions. I'm gonna come up with some LUTs here soon. So it's gonna be a busy month. Uh, I'm excited to vlog it, do some videos, do some Photoshop tutorials, and keep coming with the DaVinci tutorials. So uh, thank you guys for following along and I'm gonna catch you in the next one.